The focus of our group, Biophysical Genomics, with a location in Rotterdam and a location in Heidelberg, is to find out more about the structure of DNA in the cell nucleus, its organization, and its relation to medical, well, disease, relevant aspects, um, and also, of course, treatment. If you think that we have three billion base pairs in the human genome, how do you tackle these three billion? You cannot look at each base pair anymore. Uh, you cannot just scroll around it. Uh, it's a huge amount of data. And of course, you also have all this additional annotation of it. Where is a gene? Uh, where is a disease? Where is this modification? Where is another modification? In services and Medigrid, we also saw that the visualization of the data is extremely important. Actually, bringing together the data on a kind of virtual desktop with a capability not of your laptop, but of a complete grid in the background. That is, in principle, the ultimate goal. You want to have a virtual supercomputer on your desktop with all the capabilities. So that means you want to have a front end where you can view your data, but where you can also start analysis in the grid, and where, in principle, also your virtual desktop runs already on the grid. Now, uh, just one nucleosome, but of course we can display all the nucleosomes quite easily, chromosomes, chromosomes sorry, um, all the zones, um, the chromosomes here, and um, you see this is um, one complete set of the human um, DNA chromosomes, and um, <coughs> we now can quite easily have a look for, if we have the data, and of course we have them, um, <coughs> what about parts in the nucleosome which are um, not only once there but um, do repeat. So um, these are called du duplicons and I'm loading then in the data in to the browser and you can see if you walk along, oops, sorry, wrong button, if you walk along here it's getting slower of course and um, you see, this is chromosome 1. You have your window up here, if you walk to the left or to the right, and you see um, in the window the data um, can also be, f uh, or the um, sequence can also be found on chromosome X, X22 and all the other chromosomes. So you have copies of your um, sequence, um, of some sequences everywhere in the nucleosome, and you see there's a um, large amount of copies everywhere. Yes, yeah. the point about these copies, it's one of the most simple things you could look for. If you have a gene which has a defect area, does it have somewhere a connection to some other chromosome? And these maps can be very, very complicated, as you can see here. And uh, you can find patterns in them. And if you do that, with some knowledge you put in before, where you say, ah, I'm looking for a certain gene, and I want to know, uh, to have a certain idea for what you're looking at, uh, then you come very, very fast to networks. The other thing you just can do is you can scroll along the chromosomes in detail and see, is there something which wouldn't be detectable by an algorithm? Uh, perhaps if you zoom into chromosome... I, uh, um, yeah, just that was the, the next thing. chromosome one, then you yep. can show that. Uh, so you see, just very so. difficult patterns, which are very obvious, where no algorithm would have found that before. So that means you need, in principle, a visualization tool just before you even have an algorithm telling you what there is wrong or what there is special or whatever. You need to look at it because nothing is as good for pattern hunting as the human brain is doing. And so um, this you is. Make the window a little bit wider. Of perhaps? course. So for example here, so this is the same chromosome, chromosome 1, you see just intra, or like inner chromosomal uh, uh, kind of these uh, locations, and you just see certain kind of patterns. Also it is possible we now see just the, the straight line, the chromosome as one line. It um, sometimes, um, especially if you have connections inter, inside the chromosome, it is quite helpful to have another view um, displayed as some rotation um, or have some rotation view of it so you can more easily see um, connections between or inside the nucleosome uh, chromosome 
and um, it perhaps depends on the uh, the time and the the reps. So you can vary all the data very easily. So you can now see, for example, that there seems to be a hot spot. Yeah, these are duplications which are very near to the origin. And you see things which are much further away, and you see exactly that here something is coming to that point here. Now, if you would turn it, you would see that better. But you see very easily these kind of hotspots. And now the question is, you can in principle relate any kind of data with that. Whether this is a duplicon or a relation between A and B doesn't matter. A little bit more complicated picture we arranged. Yep. Uh, so what you see here now is you see here chromosome 15, or you see it down there chromosome 1. Uh, these numbers, by the way, uh, are indicating chromosomal uh, bands. You have seen in the textbooks these little wonderful cylindrical chromosomes which have this bending pattern and you all know if a band is missing that something is wrong with your child. You get that in every school. Um, and these are the numbers for these bands. Then we have here some data set showing, well, I don't know what you chose here. Uh, Nucleosomes? Clones. Clones, some uh, genetic uh, um, information. And above, you see now a simulation, still a simulation, but not far from actually an actual three dimensional detailed map of a chromosome. So, this is also chromosome 15, as it looks in the cell nucleus during the normal activity of a cell nucleus. And you see it's like a protein, it's a three dimensional structure. And we are able, even if we have. Um, 3D information about uh, chromosomes in one or two years, we will have them. And uh, then we are able to display the 3D structure and um, show the location on the quite simplified um, band, SATO band structure um, to get to, to connect both informations we have. So, uh, because um, we have lots of information going along a chromosome like these bug clones or nucleosome positions data. And we want to know where is it positioned in the 3D structure because um, there may be a connection between here and here, um, which is quite far away on the linear nucleosome, but in the 3D structure, it's near to each other. So there may be interactions. 